Yep. Okay. So the uh, theme of this session today is ArcServe and Amazon Web Services integration. And in particular, we're going to be talking about RHA replication and high availability, the product by ArcServe. On this screen, you see a list of NZ team members. The same list you'll see by the end of this session. So welcome to do a screenshot now or later. We will be glad to work with you in case if you have genuine interest in RHA and would like to give it a try. The session is planned to be only 15-20 minutes, so definitely we are scratching the surface and we are not planning to give you in-depth live demo of the product, but once in a while I will be switching to the product interface just to emphasize a couple points. Uh, let's begin. We need to answer a couple questions to understand why AWS, why ArcServe, and why replication. So why AWS? Obviously, we all know by now that AWS takes around 30% of market share. Advantage of early start, meaning that Amazon started doing it more than one decade ago and all other competitors on the left-hand side of this diagram are catching up, but um, obviously Amazon have spent a tremendous amount of time before all others realized significance of this type of services. And on the next slide, you'll see that um, some of the competitors are showing us a uh, much higher growth than Amazon. So we are definitely keeping an eye on some of them, like Microsoft, for instance, right? Microsoft is very eager to match with Amazon. It will take considerable amount of time, but uh, sooner or later, Microsoft will impose a serious threat to Amazon AWS. So, um, from ArcServe point of view, Amazon is a good start, and definitely with the time and uh, competition growing, ArcServe will provide the same level of integration for other uh, environments, for other platforms. But as of today, Amazon is probably the major chunk of uh, market share in that sense, and this is why Amazon, this is why AWS. Another reason is good coverage. However, uh, coverage by Microsoft, as you see here with the blue dots, is aiming to kind of like match or even overgrow grow, uh, Amazon AWS coverage. So just a matter of time when uh, Microsoft Azure will be playing as same as Amazon AWS market share wise, I think, I don't know. Um, and finally, one of the main reasons why ArcServe has chosen integration with Amazon is um, very good support for hybrid IT environments by Amazon. The list of features and technologies on the right hand side of the slide probably just for illustration how well AWS is dealing with hybrid environments. And the fact of life, uh, the more ma majority of customers out there are willing to go with hybrid. Uh, definitely small percent of customers have decided to go purely with cloud and even smaller percent of customers out there are still sitting uh, purely on-premise, but majority is going halfway. Uh, hybrid assumes some portion of infrastructure would be deployed on-premises, another portion will be deployed in cloud. 
and Amazon does realize that. Amazon does a good job to provide all support for these hybrid environments and hence ArcServe considered Amazon. Second question to answer, why replication? And a couple slides would uh, give you some idea why. For instance, with conventional backup, the main, one of the main challenges would be reduction in performance while backup job runs. Having said that, consider what amount of data we had to backup 10, 15, or even five years ago compared to amount of data we have to deal today. So time window for backup would grow, frequency of backups would suffer definitely, so recovery point objective would suffer definitely just due to this fact, just because uh, nobody in the right state of mind would try to configure backups to run every five or 15 minutes against large sets of data like a couple terabytes and above. Another challenge with conventional backups is recovery and recovery point objective, we covered that. Another one is recovery time objective. So it takes considerable amount of time to recover data set onto compromised machine if we deal with conventional backups. And finally, well, availability suffers definitely, as you see here, and all this time waiting for backup to complete, I'm um, sorry, recovery of backup to complete. And finally, this is a very interesting slide. Um, I have found this diagram just, you know, randomly looking for evolution of data protection. So one of these uh, graphics came up and this is interesting because on this diagram, very simplified by the way, as, as you realize, on the left hand side we have tape, CD, disc. These are types of media, but uh, the diagram assumes the same technology applied against this sort of media and that technology was backup at the time it was only technology, right? With components and services and everything getting less prohibitive, more affordable, couple more concepts came out and one of them is to replace backup or to complement backup with system replication, server rep replication. So we're not talking about backup on the right hand side of this diagram. For server rep replication and for cloud, we're talking about completely different approach. We are not backing up, we are not recovering. We are prov providing business continuity by other means. And all of a sudden we start distinguishing between conventional backups and replication. Replication was waiting for a long time to fork off backup set or scope of things and live on its own. A replication is affordable, replication does exist, and moreover, replication can be easily applied with the cloud as a destination. And in our particular case with ArcServe RHA, cloud destination can be easily done as AWS. And backup still, still exists. Uh, backup st is still used. And uh, moreover, many people use backup in conjunction with, with replication because these two can serve different purposes. For instance, replication is business continuity. And if you think about it, it is transparent DR. So going from left to right, disaster recovery, going from being state of the art to be transparent with replication. So disaster recovery is fading away, but it does exist, it gets better. It does not consume much time anymore with replication. And third and the last question, why we're here today, why ArcServe RHA? Simply because this product does address all these questions which we were talking before. It is easily integrated with AWS. 
it provides high, high availability and continuous data protection for Windows, Unix, Linux operating systems. It can be applied to physical and virtual environment. And the most important point today is RTO. Recovery time objective is mere seconds. Well, um, to be precise, mere seconds for uh, sales pitch um, on technical level, uh, considering that you are working with end customer and um, discussing SLA, service level agreement, it's safer to put uh, up to probably 20, 30 minutes, all things considered. But on the software level, we're talking about seconds seconds of difference between failed system and uh, brought up replica of the working instance. How RHA works? RHA can do both. Application, replication and high availability on the left hand side of the screen and full system scenario. When full system will be replicated and will be in standby mode waiting for source to go down for any reason. For application and for full system scenario, we just need to know about couple components to start working with this solution. One component is called RHA control service and it just a third machine sitting somewhere in the safe location and control service will completely orchestrate all these replication and high availability options. Definitely we have source server, source machine, and target server, replica, we call it replica. Source, we call it master. This slide illustrates a core functionality and we're talking about application level. Say we want to protect Exchange or SQL server. So we come up with a very similar machine as a target. It can be physical machine. We don't require virtual machine on the other end. And source server can be either virtual or physical. Why? Because another component called RHA engine will be installed within source and target machine. And we can configure using RHA control service and web interface connected to it. We can configure scenario replicating a specific application, in our case SQL or Exchange, from source to target. The replication is called asynchronous, but this replication by nature is getting darn close to synchronous because definitely we have some queue of bits and pieces to be transferred at any time, but this queue normally with good layout and good configuration could be only like few hundreds of kilobytes for instance or 10, 20, 30 megabytes. And um, Finally, with this level of uh, RHA, if uh, source system goes down, the control service performs the following actions. Move IP, redirect DNS, or change host name in the conjunction with starting replica, starting target machine. So, uh, as a result of this action, user or client systems out there will not uh, see, will not observe any difference. A replica will be accessible instead of a compromised source machine. Integration between ArcServe RHA and Amazon. We are talking about system full system replication and high availability and this is just an example how things work, how things work with RHA and Amazon. On the left hand side we see a normal production site. We see DNS server, we see some server which is called master server here, so this is just a machine we are concerned about. So this machine we would like to protect. Also, we have account with Amazon, 
account in AWS for this customer and VPN tunnel is provided between these two sites. RHA components would be installed on master server, definitely RHA engine runs on master server. And another instance of RHA engine will be installed on replica. We call it replica, but by nature it just receiving machine running in Amazon. The main purpose of this machine is to mirror hard drive volumes from the source machine. So the receiving machine will create and constantly update content of these volumes, which are mirroring our production volume CND. If we point more machines to this replica, this replica will show us more volumes connected to it. So the only instance of this replica in Amazon Cloud can handle in average between five and six machines with several volumes coming from each. So normal operation, normal workflow is synchronization, initial synchronization of content of these volumes and then continuous replication. So for the most part, for the most time, you will see this action being performed until disaster strikes. And by the way, the replica is constantly receiving heartbeat packets from master machine. And I'll tell you why. Suppose something bad happens to master server. Again, we are talking about uh, control service. Control service realizes that a replica does not get heartbeats from the master. Control service instructs environment to come up with recovery instance. Just a virtual machine in AWS with matching specs, matching to master machine and default volume C will be there. We start this machine, but we put it in a stop mode right away, and we do it only to retrieve some data from the system value, volume of this recovery instance. We need to collect Red Hat PV drivers from that system volume. Once we have done so, once we copy these drivers to the C volume of replicated master, we drop this default volume from the replica, from the recovery instance, and we attach replicated volumes to this recovery instance. We are back in business, almost there. We just need to adjust records for this recovery instance, replace records of master with records of recovery instance in DNS. And from that point on, all clients will use recovery instance instead of using master machine, which went down. So, took me a few minutes to cover these steps, but in real life, it might take a few seconds or a few minutes. And by the way, this uh, process can be automated and it is designed to be automated within RHA software. So having seen all that, another question might be popping up, whether this RHA software is good to be used with migration to AWS and an answer is why not? If for some reason you decided to standardize on RHA as migration tool, it would definitely flatten this hump in the middle of this diagram. Reduce cost, reduce time, if you just master RHA as it is. Just to cover a few points before we switch to Q&A, RHA, 
what is good about it? First of all, application level support. All applications listed here on the left-hand side column, plus any custom solution, any custom application can be tweaked and can be covered by R RHA. Operating system support, as you see here, Windows, Linux, Unix. And virtualiz virtualization support-wise, definitely AWS EC2. This is the reason, the main reason why we're here today. Aside from that, Hyper-V, single ESXi host or vSphere cluster, Citrix Zen server. Full system, physical to virtual or virtual to virtual. On application level, 360, meaning V2P, P2V and so on. And hardware independent, definitely, because engine runs within guest operating system or har hardware within hardware, and uh, no matter what storage we have. Just to list a few cool features about RHA. Amazon integration, we have seen that. Full system protection, we know that by now, right? Storage independence, we covered that overcomes bandwidth constraints. RHA offers a few smarts like compression, bandwidth throttling, multi-stream replication. And by the way, replication can be done not as real-time replication only. We can use schedule, we can use on-demand replication within software when we go to settings of each case scenario. P2V and V2P and vice versa and so on, we know that. Although with system replication, the target is always virtual machine. That is by design of the software and that is because we want to overcome a handful of specific issues. So we standardized on target to be virtual machine in case of full system replication. Data Rewind, very cool feature. Data Rewind is something which resembles to CDP, Continuous Data Protection. Data Rewind is possible because of journal records. So uh, receiving replica is having uh, some collection of journal records. So using this collection, we can rewind state of the replicated machine back and we can define in scenario settings, how far back we want to rewind data in case we need to. So it is a very cool feature. If compromised system, compromised system had been replicated and we found replica in compromised state, we can rewind it back 5, 10, 15 minutes time and come up with good state of replica. Few more points here. Automated recovery testing, very useful feature. In backup and recovery scope of things, it would be called uh, assured recovery testing. And in fact, with ArcServe, it is called assured recovery testing here too. So we can schedule replica to start and perform without breaking replication process. While replica runs, the receiving side is having an extra volume to collect all changes from uh, started replica. So as soon as replica is shut down, these changes will be applied to replica and replication process just continues by itself. High availability cascading, what it means? It means that you can replicate master to more than one replica. You can chain replicas. You can define one replica to be somewhere near production site, another replica in MSP data center, for instance, and third replica sitting in AWS. And you can fall back to any of those replicas later on. Security, definitely AES-256 standard encryption level applied to communication. Failover reach options. Uh, you can fail over uh, by hands on demand. You can fail over automatically, define criteria for failover. And you can fall back when it's time to 
get back to the original master, you can reverse replication back to the master machine. And finally, application auto detection, meaning that we have a good list of applications what uh, RHA product can detect and can self fine tune for, but we can also work with any application outside of that list. This is a short list of customers who are using RHA, ArcServe RHA product. You see only those who agreed to place their name on this slide. In fact, the biggest customer is not here, and the biggest customer is Microsoft. I was surprised to find it myself, but I just have to believe to some notes under this slide. This is all. This is um, theory, and um, we can spend a few minutes to take a look at the interface. If you would like, while I'm doing so, you're welcome to put any questions. I'll just switch to questions screen on my control panel. And uh, just to show you a few things, what software looks like and So this is the main interface of the program. On the left-hand side, we have one scenario defined and uh, working at the moment. Uh, in fact, this is a replication with HA component going from source machine to ESXi host. So by the way, the same mechanics would be applied to Hyper-V and vSphere or, or ESXi host. Receiving virtual machine will be a main point of connection on the receiving site. And this receiving machine will have so many volumes. Each volume would represent a source volume on production machine. To work with the AWS, we would have to start here with Cloud View. On the Cloud View, we can create cloud account add cloud account to a list of cloud accounts. We can define an instance. An instance is receiving machine on AWS site. I do have one instance here, and my instance is running now, as you see here. Some information about instance is placed on the right-hand side. So to create scenario, we just go scenario new create new scenario, continue with this wizard. Another question, what would you like to do? And as you see here, some applications are predefined here on this list, but in our particular case, we want to go with full system and we want high availability component here and integrity testing. If we want to, we can include that. And we just need to provide a machine name or IP address of master. In our case, it's going to be RHA. As a receiving site, we go with Amazon EC2. Because I have one account and I have one uh, replica standing by, I should be able to find this replica. So receiving site will be that machine running in AWS. This view is coming from master machine. So we need to decide what we need to replicate and we can leave it as it is. All these options are relevant to the scenario level itself. So all these options can be configured here and you can go back anytime and change volumes, values for each of these items here. Next screen will allow us to fine tune settings for master 
and replica. So within this set somewhere you can define what's going to happen with failover and networking component for instance and so on. And uh, finally you get to the end of this scenario, you save it and scenario start working. So this is the main idea and uh, we can spend more time individually one-on-one -on -one, or you can spend more time definitely when you sign up for trial of the product and start playing with it. But um, this is the end of my session, this is the end of my presentation and uh, I will be happy to hear from you, I will be happy to answer any questions if you have any. Let me just uh, switch to my panel and see what questions you have. So far I don't have any questions. Maybe I'm not using it. Oh, okay, hold on, hold on. I think... No, uh, it's not a question. Well, anyway, uh, let me know what you think, whether this presentation covered main topics, covered main purpose of the software, and what would you like to hear aside from what you heard in this session. So I will be glad to receive any feedback from you guys. It took me more than 20 minutes, so apologies for that. I didn't realize that I'm talking too much. And hopefully you got something out of this session. So let's stay in touch. Please take a note of uh, our contact information from this screen. And we will be happy to continue talking to you. Thanks again. I'll just mute myself. And in case if I see any questions, I'll get back. Thank you.